This episode is brought to you by marketing consulting firm, the Bonafide Lyrics and Marketing, LLC, where creativity meets business. You can check us out at www.theblm.com for more information on how we help local artists and creatives maximize their business presence. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey, It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Check us out. It's the All Love Oh No Fear Podcast. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All Love Oh No Fear Podcast. Hey. What up, what up, what up? This is the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Season 5, Episode 6. Six. 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 Um, of the All Love No Fear Podcast with me, KB, and my co-host. Mr. Mark Matt Poetic Bannon. Ah. Yes. So, first of all, we would like to apologize for being so shaky this season you would think that we would do better in this being our last season but life is happening you know it's a lot that's going on and um i just think the freedom and the time and the everything that we once had is now gone yeah and so it's just become harder to make the time to record this podcast but uh this is this is why i said i only want to do 20 episodes because i'm like i had a feeling that it was going to be a shaky season just given like the changes that have happened in our life i didn't think the changes were going to be this drastic drastic this fast but that's why i was like i wanted to do a shorter season because i was like yeah like a lot of things have shifted right like in terms of our child care situation in terms of like just the amount of time that we individually have to do this with our work and me being in school and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah. So we're going to try to be consistent going forward and power through these next 14 episodes and get it done so that we can be, we, we can end the season in a, in a professional and uh, ethical fashion. Uh, but yeah, it's just, we sorry. We sorry. Yeah. Cause you know, it's been rough. It's been rough. Word. It's been a lot going on. Um, so, how are you? I'm well. I'm well. Tired, but well. Same. Very tired, but well. Um, I'm, I'm trying to be back on my health kick again. Okay. <laughs> I went to the doctor last week and it was like, uh, sis, you is heavy. And I was like, yeah, been. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to make better decisions. I made my oat brand today. I'm drinking my green tea as opposed to my caramel macchiato with whipped cream on top. So, you know, just trying to trying to make better decisions, do better. I can see how that much sugar in the morning is bad. Definitely. Definitely. It's definitely bad. Like just that drink alone is 300 calories yes. by itself. And you have that often. 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 Um, you know what it is? Going back to work has messed me up. Cause when I was home, I was not eat I was not eating and drinking like Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks all the time. That's probably why I put back on so much weight so quickly, is from going back to work. Cause it's like in the morning I'm like, eh, I don't have time to make myself breakfast. Both my subway stops put me out either underneath the Dunkin' Donuts or underneath the Starbucks. So depending on which one I take, I just stop at the Starbucks or the Dunkin' Donuts, and I get breakfast, which which is excessive amount of money. Yes, it's also a waste of money. Um, so, yeah, I gotta I gotta make efforts to not do that. So I was like, I ordered a um, a travel mug from Amazon to take coffee to work for the days I do want coffee, or just when I want tea or hot beverage in general. So that way, I'm not spending money. Um, and I'm also not taking in excessive amounts of calories because truth be told, they put a lot of stuff in those, um, pre-made drinks at, um, or not pre-made, but those drinks they make at, at Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and places like that. It's a lot of unnecessary sugar and calories. And it's like, if I can control some of that while I'm here, then why not? Actually, I think breakfast is my most problematic meal. That's where I consume the most unhealthy calories, I think, okay. in a given day, because I take lunch to work most of the time. And I'm usually taking like 
a salad or but we, we've we've had bad dinner many times yeah and are not wanting to cook right that's true so that's like, true I, I, when I, I, we I, do cook it's, it's fine great. but when but we like, don't cook it'd be like so what's grubhub giving white castle it's lit white castle do be lit but yeah trying to trying to turn it around i'm like this is the first quarter of the year i still have nine months god willing to pull it together and get into some type of shape not just you know for vanity reasons but just because i'm older and i can feel the weight on my body in a different way than i did you know 10 years ago like i feel it now when i put on like five pounds that weren't there before like i can feel it like i just feel heavier and i don't like it i'm 36 these bones and these joints ain't giving what they used to gave so the extra rate extra weight isn't adding anything so i'm like trying to do better trying to do like um what's her name what a lady named cora jakes said i want to drink my water drink your water drink your water make sure you're drinking your water that's how she be saying it <laughs> You got to go follow her page. That's how she be saying it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to drink water and try to mind my business. Other people's business is really fascinating. But um, I'm going to work on trying to mind my own. I mean, I do be minding my business. But, you know, other people's business do be fascinating sometimes. I mean, that's what we talk about on this podcast is other people's business a lot of the time. If other people didn't have business, then I don't know what we talk about. So there's that. To talk about all of them, all people's business, Kristen. But other people's business is so fascinating, Mark. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about other people's business today. But before we get into that, let's get into love it, love it. Or, or lose, lose it. it. Hey, love, love it. it. Or, or lose it. it. Hey, 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 love, love it. it. Or, or lose, lose it. it. Hey, love, love it. it. Or lose, lose it. it. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. hey, 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 hey. hey, hey, hey. Shabba. So, um, this week's Love It or Lose It. Um, for those of you who don't know what Love It or Lose It is, it's a little game we play here at the beginning of the podcast. Just to, you know, lighten the mood, crack the tension, whatever you want to call it. Um, Mark calls it an icebreaker. We break the ice. That implies that there's ice to be broken, but that's neither here nor there. It's a game. And let's play. So, um, how this goes, usually one person has uh, four options uh, of something that they're going to force the other person to choose. Um, and the other person doesn't know. It's a surprise. So, this week, I've got the options. So, I'm going to surprise Mark. Woo! Surprise! Um, that was That was my best surprise attempt obviously i'm not good at surprises so there's that um (laughs) (laughs) uh, i'm gonna work on that i gotta do better um so this week's love it or lose it um childhood toys childhood toys yes okay this was inspired by the childhood toys i'm currently looking at that belong to our child okay so childhood toys these are things we all played with or maybe wanted uh as kids to play with uh and so let's make some choices the four choices are action figures slash dolls legos play-doh slash slime and easy bake ovens those are our four choices which one would you love hold on to for the rest of your life as a keepsake play with as an adult if you could without being judged by people for seeming childish and uh which one would you lose throw away never want to see produced uh sold just generally in your presence ever again and we'll start with our lose it's um turn over to you mark lose it probably the easy way govern okay misogynist no it's much (laughs) as these are jokes i do not mark is not a misogynist that food looks like it's trash hey I, I, ever since I've seen the Easy Bake Oven, I'm always like, that can't be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, that can't be healthy. If, Were you a child thinking if, that if, can't if, be healthy? As a child, I was like, I don't think this this goes well. Because, because like, I, as a child, I, I was always like, how do things work? Which is developed into who I am now. That's fine. So, like, in my mind, I'm like, someone explain to me how this works. Mm-hmm. I was like, you told me it, it cooks with a light bulb? If it cooks with a light bulb, what, does it take... 85 days to cook with a light bulb it it doesn't make sense so <laughs> if, if, if it's 
<laughs> I'm over here like. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so it 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 bothers. It, it it can't be good for you. I mean, we eat a McDonald's. Well, I eat McDonald's. Yes. And and you know microwave food all the time. So I mean, how bad is the easy be- easy bake food really? Probably pretty terrible because stuff like that was pretty pretty terrible. They, you, they, they haven't tried to do anything like that again. There, there's no newer version of Easy Bake Oven, so they someone realized something. Well, maybe they found a formula that worked and they stuck to it. Sometimes that's what you got to do. If it ain't broke, say, don't fix it. Well, they they it, it's not selling anymore, so obviously you can still buy Easy Bake Ovens. They on sale. There are newer versions of it. I don't know, but you can buy them. Mm-hmm. They're still they are still for sale. Okay. You can still go right to Amazon and get things. So there's that. Just saying. Someone needs to explain the science of it. I'm sure if there's a YouTube university video that can help break it down for you because YouTube has everything. Okay. I'm going to read this article while you go. You lose it. Well, this article says how easy to make ovens work. And you go ahead. <laughs> so my lose it. I think it's going to be action figures and dolls. Why? I never really was into them as a kid. Like You don't got imagination? Yes, but uh, no. <laughs> Not yes, but no. <laughs> yes, I have an imagination, obviously. But I don't know. Like I feel like when I got dolls as a kid, it was because everybody else had dolls. And I was like, well, I guess I should get one too. But like I was never really I feel like, into I feel, them. I feel like um action figures and dolls are just about imagination. It's it's strictly because like you have to imagine them doing things outside of what you see. You you have to go beyond what you see. I feel like it's all about that. You have to imagine. But then I guess talking. I don't have imagination. You have to imagine them talking, walking, even though they're gone. They're just you're just moving them with your hand. But you have to you, you have to you have to look you have to look past what's actually happening. <laughs> So what you mean to tell me is that most children are crazy? How is ma- imagination because what are you talking about? Imagination. I'm imagining a plastic thing is walking. What are you talking about, Mark? That's what imagination is. Child, no. I guess I don't have an imagination there because ain't no way. I ain't it's never not, did. It's not crazy. It's just imagination. No, that's crazy. Imagination is it's not nah. crazy. The dolls was interesting for like the outfits. But like, even the dolls are the same thing. The, the dolls is imagination because people used to have stories. I'm the mommy, I'm the daddy. It's, it's, it's imagination. I don't have an imagination then. You have an imagination, probably. I just didn't have one when it came to that. I think you're. I think you're more realist. Yeah, I, I didn't have one when it came to that. Like I literally got dolls because I remember I asked for a Barbie because there was like there would they would be days when I was like younger in school where like they would allow us to bring toys mm. from home and everybody had a Barbie and I was the only one that didn't have one and I was like, all right, y'all, can I get a Barbie? And then I got a black Barbie. And I was like, I didn't know that Barbies were black because all of my classmates had white Barbies. So I was the only one with a black Barbie, which I didn't hate. I think it was a Brandy Barbie that I got. That that, that was a thing, so it's possible. Yeah. I think that's that's what it was. It was a Brandy Barbie. I remember getting that. And then I got the Pocahontas Barbie. So I, I always got the of color Barbies. I never got white ones. And I was like, that was my introduction into knowing that they made Barbie and other things than blonde hair. You know, I didn't like toy like dolls either because their hair was plastic and it would get real matted and entangled after a while. Like it would be cute to comb through for a couple of days. Imagination. And then it would get tattered. And I was just like, well, I'm just going to give Barbie a haircut because I don't like that. Uh, so then Barbie had like a short bob instead of the long flowing mane. Cause I, I didn't like. I think I think maybe I'm a little bit too realist for yeah, you're, you're too realist for those for, kind for, of for, things. Yeah, I was like, you you go you're going too far too far with it. Yeah, you, yeah. You got, your imagination fills in the gaps. Yeah, my imagination didn't do that. I was just like, nah, Brett, Barbie here look crazy. We gotta cut that, um, and that's what I did. So yeah, I think I think yeah. If I if I never had a doll, I would have been fine. I I literally think I asked for it because my classmates had had them, not because I actually really wanted it. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, what's your love it? Um, probably I think I've always wanted to be great at Play Doh. Mm-hmm. But I was not. <laughs> <laughs> how how does one not be great at Play Doh? 
because I I'm I I feel like sculpting is something that I feel like I want to be good at, but I I am not, and it's probably because I, I haven't taken time to like get to take classes. It's, it's just like my issue with sculpting and even drawing. I, I feel like sculpting and drawing are two things that like I've always wanted to do, but I need to take a class and do it. Like I I don't ha- I don't have innate talent. Okay. In drawing and sculpting, I don't believe that to be true. You, I believe you have innate talent. You just need to like in work drawing, at it. Not, not in drawing and sculpting. I, I think I have. I'm not. I'm not creative. I would say. I, just, I would say drawing. You do. I do not. Um, I feel like I've seen you draw things, and I'm like, all right, it's better than me. It's it's not innate. Um, <laughs> but um, I I I I do think that um, I will have to take a class, and I feel like if I take a class and doing it, then I'll be fine. But like things that are. I think that's why I'm, I'm so fascinated and people get such a leg up for anything that's like art related or painting or stuff. I, I, I'm so fascinated because I can't do it. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm very fascinated with people who know how to do those things. Um, like I, I, I'm, I'm always like, oh, y'all, y'all, are, y'all are great. Fantastic. Those are the people who I, I put up on a pedestal when it comes to art stuff. Cause mm. I, I, it, it, it seems so hard for me to do. Cause it's like you, you have to be able to, visualize everything uh-huh. and every detail and be able to pinpoint certain detail like I've, I've seen them do stuff like mm-hmm. they they see certain details they look at shadows like it's just yeah. it's just a lot of things that you got to focus on you know who you have to follow on um social media his name is john moody he's a painter um i actually found out about him from a reality show he was on this show on bravo it was it southern charm new orleans but he he's a painter for a living and it's just like it's amazing how he paints because it's like he shows like the process of him doing it and it's just like to me it just looks like he's putting random pieces of random like swatches of paint on canvas but then you see the finished product and you can see the layers and the depths and the shadow and stuff like that I'm like that's really a talent because I don't understand painting as like like I can go do a little paint and sip with the with the little stencil canvas or whatever but like the way that people are able to create layers and texture and depth with paint and with paintings is fascinating to me. But like I follow his page and it's like it, it's fuego how he how he does how he does what he does. So I love I love to watch it. It's great. Yeah. It's um, great. But like with that in mind, I think my love it would be Legos. Okay. I I enjoy building though, so like I do. I could do I could do architecture. You know what I'm saying yeah, those things like and building things and how things stack up. So like that that's things I can do. I understand. I understand. Uh, this, this is this is. I think this is the key. Mm-hmm. I understand bu- building structures because they're straight lines, and it's it's like it's putting things together. That's why that's why I can do flyers. Like you see how I create flyers. It's just mm. it's very structural. Right how I create things. It's very lines and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I'm not good at like drawing people, humans, mm-hmm. animals. Right. And I think that's why I say I can't draw. Gotcha. I can draw buildings. Okay. Buildings. Okay. I can do buildings. I can do anything that's like lines like that. When you start going around to the to the to the, the living the living beings. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when it gets dicey for you. <laughs> that's where it gets dicey. I could I could do all the inanimate objects all day. Things that are living and like because living living I, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> living items, living objects have so many different things going mm. on. Yeah. So like I th- I think that is um that is where my um why with sculpting, I when I think of sculptures, I think of people. I think of animals. Mm-hmm. I think of things like that. You know what I'm saying that's what I think of when I think of sculpture, right? Like I can make a ball and sculpt in in play doh, but that's but so can so can Avery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I I've 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 made hot dogs for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you you the one that have her thinking she can have. She can she can she can have all the because she be coming to be like mommy, let's make a spaceship. What? I don't huh? Structures. I can do structures all day. I can do structures with Legos. I can do I can do structures. I can understand concepts. Great. That is cool. 
Like you start coming up me with the with the 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 living objects. Even plants are kind of hard for me. Really? Even, even plants are hard. I feel like I could give a plant. Like people, I can't do. I like a plant. I feel like I could. I could make a plant happen. A plant or a flower. I could. I could do something with that. I feel like I can prosper and get that together in some capacity, but not no, not no people. That's not going to happen. I, I think the issue I have with plants and animals is because there's so many variations of, of, of all of them. Right. Because, like, no two plants are the same. Like, no two people are the same. Yikes, yikes, yikes. And, like, every time I've tried to do something with one of them, it's always been, like, I'll start with one and go to another. So it, it, like a, it looks like a jumbo mess. Mm-hmm. So that that's that's my um my issue. Heard you. Heard you. Yeah, it, it's. I, I I want to learn to do it. Like I feel like I take a drawing class, but like, I feel like I have to go start from from the beginning. Okay. Like, I feel like there's like a, there's like a concept I'm missing. You could do it. You could do it. You could do it. I believe in you. I feel like if I, if I knew how to draw and I was good at that, I could do a lot more in terms of digital art. Like, I can make NFTs. I can make video games. Because I, I, I understand conceptually. Like, mm-hmm. I could be a creative director. Mm-hmm. I could be stuff like that. I can understand, like, what I want and what I can do. Mm-hmm. Actually creating it, I cannot. That that part is where, <laughs> is where you, it eludes you. That's that's where I'm lost. It's actually creating the actual thing. You're like, huh, that's so, interesting. Like, I, I, I I would be able to do a lot of things if I actually knew how to draw because all I think drawing translates to all of those things. Gotcha. Drawing translates to creating artwork, creating digital art, creating NFTs, creating video games. It, it, it translates to all of those things. I mm-hmm. think. Gotcha. Yeah. I follow. I follow you. And I like. Oh, cause like I, I've, I've, I've tried to draw something. I keep going back trying to edit, and I'm just making it worse because I'm not sure or I'm, I'm in the <laughs> wrong place. Aha! Uh-huh. I see. What I know. I know when it looks good. I just don't know. You don't know when to just leave it where it is. Yeah, and I need, I need someone to see my see see what I'm what I want, and put it on paper. That's <laughs> but fine. That's they, they're not in my mind. So how would they know? How would they know? How, how will they know? Yes. How will they know? And I know it's frustrating because I have to deal with that with graphic design. So I understand it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a thrill by any stretch of the imagination. Nobody wants that. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. All right. What do you love it? Hey, my love it. My love it. My love it. Oh, hold on. What were the options I gave? Um, Legos, Play Doh, Ashton uh, Figures, and Easy Bake Oven. Play Doh. Okay. I think Play Doh is big fun. Um, it's soft for the first, well, when it's not left out for days by a child. It's soft. Um, it's very easy to manipulate. Um, it's a lot of color options. If your parents love you and buy you the assorted stack with several colors. Why, why are you going to come at the parents' love? <laughs> what the because what I'm supposed to do with this little five pack with red, green, yellow, blue, and maybe white. What am I supposed to do with that? I need more diversity. You can mix colors. I need more. Like, stop giving me primary. Start start running me, you know. You, you can make colors. I could, but, like, I don't want to make my own purple. Why not? Because I don't want to. <laughs> um, I also have, as, as Mark is aware, um, some type of, I don't know if it's OCD or something else when it comes to things mixing. Like they can be next to one another, but I like Avery takes the the play doh and, yeah, I'm like, you're, and you're, mashes you're, it up. That means you're not happy when she plays the play doh. That drives all. me nuts. Because she mix, he will mix them up every time. I'd be like, I'd be desperately trying to take it apart. <laughs> like I want them to stay separate. She will, she will mix it up in a second. Like I like like I'm I'm fine with taking like a part of that one color and mixing it with another color, but not the full container of play-doh mixed with another full container of play-doh i she, can't take that she, every time she wants to write something she wants to make it rainbow mm-hmm. that's why she likes she likes rainbow color she likes to she likes to mix a rainbow she does she does my child is like that because like every time i'm like oh, color she like rainbow i was like just it's one color <laughs> <laughs> you, just use one i mean in her defense 
<laughs> in her defense, she is an islander, and we do like colors. We like we like a lot of colors. Okay, That's just, I'll, I'll give that. Just I'll one. Is, be great. Avery said, "You won't limit me to just one color. I want them all. <laughs> I want them all." And I support her in that, except when it comes to play doh. Like, please stop mixing up the play doh. I, I do. I do know. I remember myself being stressed out because I think she had the color something for school, mm -hmm. and it was a panda. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's black and white. She's not going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what do you mean I can't color it purple? What's going on here? She was like, she's not going to like this black and white panda. What kind of shindig are you people running? <laughs> she's like, so just, just black is on. Yeah, she's use. not impressed with one color thing. She doesn't like that. She likes all the colors. So, yeah. I think that's what I like about Play-Doh. You have mad color options. Like, there's mad variations if you, like, get the big packs. And I like just kind of, you know, you, you can cut shapes out. You can do, like, the 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 mold. You can do, like, the... There was, like, a machine where you can, like, press it and make, like, strips of it. Like, it's a lot of fun that you can get into with Play-Doh. And I like it because it's not a messy toy. Yeah. Um did you um? You can oh, just I, put I, it back I, in the thing and keep it pushing. I found out Easy Bake Oven is basically how it works. is It's a light. It's uh -huh. just a light bulb. Uh -huh. And I guess they contain the heat uh -huh. so that it heats up. It just takes a while to heat up. Uh -huh. But it's literally just a light bulb. Okay. And it says, I guess they say with the light bulb, you can get up to like 350 degrees if it's okay. in close. So you could bake a mac and cheese in there. That ain't no problem. You do make mac and cheese at 350. I, I don't understand why you're not, <laughs> why you're giving me the eye like I said something crazy. Yeah. I disagree with your take. I maybe maybe we'll let Avery do an easy bake oven, but I'm still sketchy. You're still nervous? Still, still, still yeah. You, know, you don't like that for her? All right, what, um, that's it? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Thank y'all right. so much. And we would love to hear what y'all think about Love It or, or lose, lose It. Hey, it. Love It. Or lose, lose It. Hey, 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 Love It. Or lose It. Hey, Love It. Or lose It. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. So. Maybe Easy Wake Oven is a good thing to do for um people who don't have an oven. Just have like like five easy bake ovens. I don't think that's that's realistic. Um, I hear what you're saying, but like, if you don't have a like, if you live in a hotel, cooking cooking and sustaining your life out of an easy bake oven is crazy. Yes, but you don't have a kitchen, also. I mean, I guess you gotta do what you gotta do. But and you don't have a kitchen, and they don't let you have a stove or hot plate or anything like that. Sometimes it's a wildlife. It's a wildlife, but I mean, you know. I, and and I, I'm saying that because we've we've met people who like they they can't do anything. That's true. All they have is like the microwave in the in the, not even in their room in the mm -hmm. office. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's fair. It's very much very much fair. <laughs> so like, just trying to figure that out. Agreed. 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 So let's get into. Our topic for today. Word. So this podcast comes out on Tuesday. So by the time this comes out, what we about to talk about will probably be think pieced and Instagrammed and memed to the death. Word. But um this past Sunday was the annual Academy Awards, aka the Oscars. Um the good brother Will Smith was nominated for um the Academy Award for playing Richard Williams in the movie King Richard uh, about the father of Venus and Serena and several other children. Um, but Venus and Serena are the ones we know. Um, the movie came out last year. Um, great reviews. People loved it. I was kind of like, okay. I think because the character annoyed me so much, but I guess, you know, maybe that was the point. Um, but yes, Will was nominated for Best Actor, and as we know in the past, he's been uh, he's been nominated for Best Actor, but did not win. Um, but it seemed like he was the heavy favorite to win this year, so that was very exciting. Um, so, <laughs> well, I, I, the show was going. You know, it, they had three female hosts. It was Regina Hall, um, Amy Schumer, and Wanda Sykes. Um, everything was cool. Um, show was going well. Um, 
you know, typical Oscars, nothing, nothing too crazy. It's usually boring as hell. Um, it did seem a little more lively this year because Will Packer was the, um, director of the, um, Oscars. Um, and you know, Will Packer gave his girls trip, uh, think like a man, all, a lot of great black classics that we enjoy are compliments of Will Packer. Um, so he was directing things. It had a little flavor. It had a little oomph. It had a little zhuzh. Um, the music was giving what it was supposed to give. So we're having a good time. We're kiki and whatever the case is. Chris Rock comes out to present for best documentary. And, you know, Chris Rock has hosted the Oscars before. So we're like, all right, cool. Hey, Chris Rock. Haven't seen you in a minute. He comes out. He makes a joke about um, Will Smith saying uh, he's hoping that, or not a joke about Will, but he's basically saying that Javier Bardem hopes that Will Smith will win because both Javier Bardem and his wife, um, Penelope Cruz, were nominated. And so it's like, you know, in this situation, no one can win, you know? So then he moves on from that joke and says, uh, hey, Jada, nice to see you. Can't wait to see you in G.I. Jane 2. And then he laughs. They cut to the camera of Will laughing. Jada rolls her eyes. Then Chris Rock looks like he's about to move on to another joke. The next thing you know, we see Will walk up and what looks like smacks fire out of Chris Rock, then turns around and walks back to his seat. The entire world stopped and was like, wait, what just happened? Then we see them talking back and forth and it's bleeped out here in America. So we can't hear the audio. We just see words being exchanged. Uh, Of course, the internet quickly got to solving the problem and somebody that lived in Australia put up the audio because they didn't bleep it out there. So we were able to see them arguing back and forth. And long story short, um, Will Smith felt like the joke about G.I. Jane, which is, you know, if you don't know what G.I. Jane is, it's a movie uh, where the main character, who's a woman, like her head is shaved bald or shaved, not bald, but like, what do you call it? Like a, like a dark Caesar, like very low haircut. Um, And so because Jada has a very low haircut now um, due to her alopecia issues, um, I guess she was over it with the joke. And, you know, Will went to quote unquote defend his wife. Um, So, you know, we'll, we'll get into the, the, deeper aspects of it in a, of a second. But I guess my initial reaction was like, I didn't think it was real at first. I thought it was like a, like a fake thing. And I didn't realize until I heard the audio that they were really arguing back and forth and like Will was really in there dropping F-bombs and going crazy. I also realized it was legit because Lupita Nyong'o was seated directly behind Will and Lupita was like, um, what, what all is going on? Um... I I thought it was a fake slap at first. But then after seeing Chris Rock, who who I respect immensely for continuing to present the award after that very awkward, uncomfortable, crazy moment happened, because I don't know, I might have walked off because I, I don't I can't imagine like that happening to me, you know, a, in a situation where I'm supposed to be quote unquote at work. And and I, I, I don't know what I would have done. I, it was just stunning. Like you could tell Chris Rock was stunned by what happened because the way Will walked up there, it looked like, oh, maybe he was going to go say something to him like, hey, yo, chill on the jokes or whatever. But like not to do like a full open handed slap. Like I don't think Chris Rock saw that coming. It was it was a stunner. Um, so it, it was shocking to see because, you know, I think Will Smith has always been, you know, very polished, consummate, professional, like, so no, no one thought it was real at first. I think it only became real once we heard the audio and realized like, oh snap, like they really, they really doing this. This really happened. Um, and the response on the internet is interesting. Um, it's a combination of people being like, Will is wrong, Will is out of order. And people being like, that's what Chris Rock deserves. These comedians need to understand they can't be talking about people's wives, protect black women, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be honest, at this juncture in the conversation, I actually don't care anymore. Um, my feeling initially was, and I still feel this way to a, to a degree, like it is wild 
and it's not just because it's the Oscars. It, it is wild that what happened on camera happened. Like, I felt like if Will really felt some kind of way about what was said, he could have caught him backstage, caught him at an after party. Like, it wasn't something that I feel like we, the public, needed to see play out on primetime television at the Oscars. I would have felt the same way if this was the Grammys, the American, any other award show. I would have felt the same way if it was anybody else because at the end of the day, to me, it just looked wild. And it took away from his eventual Oscar win because he did win for the movie. And I feel like for it to be something that he wanted and worked for for so long to finally get it, but the new cycle is about the slap and not about the fact that he won an Oscar that he had been denied for so many times. Like this is his moment where I felt like he should have had his Leonardo DiCaprio moment because when Leonardo finally won for the Revenant, it was like, Oh my gosh, this is so well deserved. He's, you know, he's been snubbed so many times and he's one of the greatest actors of our time. And it's great that he's finally getting a shine. Like that's what I wanted Will Smith to have in this moment was to have that. Because not many black men have won Best Actor at the Oscars. It, he's one of few. He's in a very rare class of, of, of actor. And so I wanted for him to have that moment and have it be a, oh my gosh, he finally got it for King Richard. He deserves this. He should have gotten it for Malcolm X. He shouldn't have gotten it for Ali. He should have gotten it for... There's mad movies that Will Smith should have gotten an Oscar for. And so I felt like this is finally that he got it. And it wasn't for no, no like movie role that was like beneath him or belief his caliber as an actor. And the fact that it's being overshadowed by this, this two second act is, is, is terrible to me. And the fact that it will always be, his Oscar win will always be associated with that is, is terrible to me. I also feel bad for the Williams sisters, because this was a movie and a moment about their dad and their love for their dad and what hit, what their dad did to get them to where they are to the point to where they could even make a movie about him. And it's like, this is the second time I feel like they've been robbed of their opportunity to properly celebrate their father in the way they wanted to. First, that stupid campion woman got up there and said what she said at the SAG or whatever other awards it was. And now this incident is overshadowing that. And then I also feel bad for Quest Love. Quest Love winning an Oscar is a big friggin' deal. But again, that's been overshadowed by the fact that the slap preceded Chris Rock <laughs> presenting Quest Love with that Oscar. So it was just like a lot of moments were ruined for a lot of people by that one slap. And I don't know if I feel like the perceived disrespect of Chris Rock to Jada balances the ruined moment and opportunities for not just Will, but for Venus, for Serena, Richard Williams, and for Questlove. I don't, I don't know if I feel like it, it balances. Well, it, it, some it, some it, people I, feel like it does. I personally don't. I, I obviously don't think it balances at all. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I don't think Will Smith thought about all those things. Definitely not. Um, I think he was just thinking about and, react, and reacting to Chris Rock. Yes. And I, I, I think I, I was mentioning this after. I was like, this might be one of the few times that Will Smith is kind of, his actions affect others. Yeah. Yeah. Usually his actions don't affect others as much mm. if he does something. Yeah. Um, it affects it might affect other people's pockets, might affect other people like right. very few times if he did something would it affect it that way. I think the last time would probably be like I guess how people were saying how he how he acted during Fresh Prince of Bel Air with um the old on Viv and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like yeah. that might be um how his actions kind of affected others outside of that mm -hmm. but this is i guess the only other time i guess how his actions directly affect kind of directly affect somebody mm -hmm. else so like 
because he hasn't really been in a position like that. Right. It's probably why um, he, he didn't think of all those factors. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, with all the think pieces, if he, if he like, I don't, I don't think he should read all of them, of course. But, yeah. But if he, if he gets a general idea, he'll, he'll see that. Right. And he'll be like, oh, okay, this, this is affected more than just that. Right. It's affected, like, like he, I don't know if he understood how much it affected something like Quest, Quest right. Love. Yeah. Like he, he tried to address how would have, how would affect it the Williams sisters, but yeah, I don't, people like Quest Love is like a big thing. Yeah. To do that, yeah. how it affects people who are um, doing the Bel Air show, yeah. yeah, like stuff like that. Yeah. I don't think he realized because, like, like I said, I, I think he realized how it affected that because he was trying to say during his speech. I want to shine to be on them. Yeah. Like, so like yeah. I, I see he understood that right. part. But yeah. like I, I feel as if that like he um I don't think he realized the effect on Yeah. Like Quest Love and stuff like you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I, yeah. I, I don't think he realized that. Yeah. Like I think I think the the part for me that that kind of you know was was a little like like and I think not just for me but for a lot of people who saw it was that was a little shocking was just like Will Smith is not new to this like he's he's a he's been at this entertainment industry actor game for a while and he's normally been so composed and I'm not saying that people always have to be composed and they can't have reactions and whatever the case is but it was like it's so out of character and I'm not saying that we know this man in real life but it's so out of character from what we normally see of him that I think that was a big part of what was so shocking about it too. And then for me personally, I've said this to you, I had an issue with it happening in the room with elders. Forget the white people. I don't care nothing about that. (laughs) I just feel like, even though it seems to me like Denzel and Samuel L. Jackson were perfectly okay with what happened and they were talking to not okay, but they pulled um, him aside and spoke to him and helped him. Cause I don't know if you saw the clip, but there's yeah. a clip of uh, Tyler, Tyler Perry, Perry and, and, uh, and then I think there's another clip I saw where Samuel L. Jackson hugged him, but I don't know for me. I'm like, I always feel like when there's elders in the room, like you just got to chill on certain things. Cause it's just disrespectful to them to be acting in a certain way. So that's what I immediately thought of too. I was like, damn, they did that in front of Denzel. That's crazy. But you know, it is, it is, it is what it is. You know, I hope, I hope that, you know, those older, those elder statesmen of this acting game were able to like have a conversation with him and just kind of help him see, like, I feel you. I got you on the defending your wife. I got it. But like, also this, this kind of look wild. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And, I understand to his um his wide public persona mm-hmm. it it did seem off to a lot of people based off of um how he's been kind of going through um what what, what he's been displaying mm-hmm. on YouTube and I guess only like the, yes. within the last 2 years yeah yeah right um and like so before even before recently when he was doing his book thing he's been kind of like Remember that freestyle he did? Yes. And then he cursed in the freestyle. Yes. And everybody was like, yo, yeah. he's talking. And he, and he was like, I'm trying to, from that point on, I think he was kind of trying to break from. From the stereotype of who not he is. Not the stereotype of Not like, the stereotype, but of, the perception. I feel, feel as if like, I have to feed into perceptions of me. Right. And I have to do a certain thing because I'm Will Smith and I have to do that. So he's been kind of trying to break from that. Right? Yeah. And then, um... More recently, he did a special when he was addressing his um, book. He was talking mm-hmm. about his book. Yeah. And he was also do, talking about his, like, he was trying to um, lose weight for something. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to, I remember you showed me some of those videos. So I, and I, I remember it's like he did, he did a, he did a, he had a picture of himself with a belly. Mm-hmm. And his mind was like, all right, I'm going to do, make a show and do everything from there at the same time while writing his book. Uh huh. And then he realized at that time, he was like, I'm realizing that I've always felt like I had to be a certain way mm-hmm. as Will Smith, right? Yeah. So, like, in his mind, I feel like everything he's been doing, I feel like mentally, basically, like this, 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 this is, I'm not a doctor, I'm not mm. a psychiatrist, right? but based off of what I'm seeing, uh-huh. it seems like everything that has happened, 
he's kind of been weighing am I not acting this way am I not doing something because I'm trying to perform for the people mm-hmm. or is this how I really feel right right, right. and right. so like he's constantly been like alright I gotta do this and so excuse me when someone is going through something like that mm. and two they can find out what that happy medium is mm-hmm. they go from one extreme or another right right so if you know and I was um, telling Kristen which you, if you notice every time someone says something about Will Smith you cut to him and he was laughing uh huh right yeah because even think... Regina Hall made a joke when she was doing her segment about calling up like the men who were single correct so like and Jay didn't jump up there and slap her yeah if so, she felt away I'm sure she talked to her afterwards like a normal person yeah but like he was laughing but I don't think him laughing and smiling mm-hmm. means that he thinks it's, it's funny. funny no 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 I don't he, I don't think he, so he he has been bred mm-hmm. <laughs> from when he was younger to how to react on camera yeah and I think and, that's and, what was so shocking because Will is definitely media trained correct. so to see him sort of go off script like that was like hold on now yeah so like he, he has been taught for a long time like, and, and he was kind of addressing that on the um in the on, acceptance speech no no in the video in the on video YouTube, okay on, on YouTube that he was doing because mm. he was talking about like how he was saying like oh, I don't want to do this anymore and like this is the stuff he doesn't really show Right. Like he's like this whole thing is stupid. I don't want right. to do this anymore. Like I, I don't like because he he will push himself to perform. Right. In situations, he'll mm-hmm. he'll make jokes to perform, mm-hmm. even though that's not how he really feels. Right. Because he's like, I have to make the people around me happy, feel better, mm-hmm. and that's who I am. So, what what I believe was going on was Chris Rock made made the joke. Mm-hmm. He did his usual laugh and everything because mm-hmm. he knows how to make the right face. Right. 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 Then he, he saw he, Jada's he saw face. Jada being upset. Mm-hmm. He was like, I really didn't like it either. I, don't uh, know, I was upset about it. Right. In his mind, he's he was probably like, I, am I not going up there and saying something mm-hmm. because I'm trying to be this media person again? Uh-huh. I don't want to be that anymore. I think he had a moment of temporary insanity when he got up. Mm-hmm. And then when he was walking, he was like, oh, I guess I'm committed right now. <laughs> then he just went through. Like, I don't think he was like in that same state of insanity throughout the whole process. I mm. think it just happened in the beginning when he started walking. And then as, because like, it, it, it's a long walk to still have that same feeling initially. Right. Like, <laughs> a, 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 anytime you feel angry, like, if you have a long walk, it takes a, like, you, you, you don't feel it. About the, five steps in, you'd be yeah, like, you, you know you, what? You never feel it the whole walk. I'm, I'm, I'm overdoing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing too much. You never feel, you never feel the same way like the whole walk. So like, or even, even if like, you don't feel, but like, he's like, oh, I gotta, I have to commit to this now. So like, I think that's kind of where it was going on. And, um, so it happened, he walked back and like, cause he, and like even in his speech, he was um after he was saying. He 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 he. The funny thing is, in his speech, he was addressing what Chris Rock was saying. Was basically he was basically saying people have been talking crazy about my family this right. whole time. So like that's why I say it, it. I think in his mind, it's just a build up. Yeah, it's a build, yeah. it was a bit of a lot of thing. That that that's that was just destroy. Right. That broke it, but like it was. I, I think it was kind of like a build up from of like. The last few months, last few years, years or whatever, because of, of like a bunch of things happening, and he was like, "Hey, Chris Rock was just the catalyst for everybody else. Hey, stop talking about me, right?" So like, he was just like, so like, it, it was it was Chris Rock, and I I, I think it's to everybody's point. They're saying like, "Oh, he wouldn't do it with somebody else." He's he's right. He wouldn't do it with somebody else, but. Cause Chris Rock, right? Because he not smack. If it was Steve Harvey or it was Dave Chappelle, he not yeah. smacking them. But Chris Rock was the example to tell everybody else, "Hey, stop talking about me." And and people did bring up a point that you know when the the Smiths boycotted the Oscars back in 2016, Chris Rock made a bunch of jokes about them and about Jada because Jada was like one of the main um, people speaking out talking about Oscars so white whatever. And I think Chris made a joke to the effect of, "But baby, you you ain't never been nominated for no Oscar. Like you yeah. you not invited to this conversation. Why you here? So maybe you know there was that playing in the mix. Like who knows what the friction was." behind closed doors and behind the scenes with them because they're in the same circles i can't imagine that you know 
they haven't they haven't run into each other and you know whatever the case is i think for me like a chris chris they both they are peers they're not that far apart in age chris is four years older than um will like it just seemed to me like two 50 something year old men black men should not have been on stage acting like that and i'm never the girl that's like you know caping for black men but like to see a black man slap another black man whether it was real or fake on national television like that was insane to me to see I was like what is this and I wonder to myself would women get the same get the same the same grace black women if that had happened what do you mean if Jada was offended by whatever it was Regina said and she got up and smacked Regina Hall what would the reaction be well, what, like, what, 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 what do you consider grace by what's happening now? Grace in the sense of there's a large portion of, of, of people defending Will Smith. There's a large person because that's not, that are not, but I, I understand what you're saying. And I think part of it is because they don't like Chris Rock and they don't like comedians like Chris Rock because they feel like they they take it too far or they say too many they don't like the yeah, jokes the, the, that they the, the tell people defending Will Smith are people who think Chris Rock goes too far yeah people think that people saying certain things and people feel as if it's it's your right to defend your wife yeah that way because some people are, are putting and, and, and those, it under those are the people who are kind of on that fence yeah because I saw a lot of the people hashtagging their responses with protect black women I'm like. I don't think that's what that phrase is supposed to mean. One, two, the conversation that we're having is still centered around Will. Like no one is talking about, well, how did Jada feel about any of this? What are Jada's feelings about what Chris said? What are Jada's feelings about how her husband responded? What are Jada's feelings? Like ain't nobody talking about that. All we're talking about is what Will Smith did. So it's like, if we talk about protect but, black women, but we, let's we, let's also bring the black women we're allegedly protecting to the center of the conversation. What, what I will say is if Jada got up and smacked somebody, they would still say, why didn't Will Smith go up and trying to stop her? You think so? Yes. I don't know. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> but I will say that would definitely happen. That would definitely be a why thing. Why didn't he try to stop her? Well, I mean, people are saying the same thing. Like, why didn't she try to stop him? Well, yeah. I, I from, 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 from going up there. What I'm saying is like, that, that would definitely be a thing. Yeah. And like, and, and, and if she went there and tried to snap Chris Rock, he would have been like, why wasn't Will Smith up there? Hit, try to, why, why didn't Will Smith do it himself? Yeah. So like I understand yeah, there, what you're saying. A, yeah, yeah. It, 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 I understand what you're saying, and like I, I get it. They they they're, they're not addressing. They're talking mm-hmm. about that, but the reality is how um how we treat the situation. If Jada went up and, and smacked Will Chris Rock, they were like, "Why didn't Will Smith do right. that? Why is no, it, no, why, need why, ushers, honey? Why, why why is he just letting his wife or open? security or something? Why is he letting his wife do that and he, him not doing it? Yeah, because the way Will Will Smith should have never got that close to Chris Rock to put his hands on him. I'm sorry. I get it. Like it's it's too much. We got to start I, I, acting I, I, like it's love and hip hop reunions at this point. So yeah. you need to be present. It, 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 it wouldn't have been a, um better if it was Jada. Child, it would it would it would have been it would have been, it would've been it would've, the funny thing is it would still probably been hostility towards Will Smith. Sure, sure, but I just I just feel like which which, which I I understand it comes from. Racism of expecting that from black, so I, I, I get it. I get yeah. where it comes from. Yeah, but I'm trying to say is it would still be hostility towards Will Smith no. in that situation. Like, I, like me personally, if Will Smith is sat in his chair and been like, "Hey, yo, watch your mouth. Stop talking about my wife." Ah, ah, ah. I'd have been fine with that. But I, I, I personally, I was lost when you did the get up. Like once, <laughs> you, once you got up, to me it negated any argument that you had about. Oh, I didn't like what he said. I, 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 that's cool. You didn't like what he said. But if we're going to talk about, if we're going to, if we're going to use the language of violence is not the answer, blah, 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 blah. Either it's that way all the time, or it's not like that. Because the same people that we like violence, you don't condone violence. Violence isn't the answer are the same ones being like, yes, we'll defend your wife. I, I, I'm like, no, if it's, if it's, if it's violence is not the answer. Let violence not be the answer all the time. Like you don't get to pick and choose uh, when I, violence is the answer. I don't. 
I don't. I don't believe Vons is never the answer. I don't believe that comes about. But all. I'm just saying that like people who <laughs> use that rhetoric yeah. in other scenarios are now conveniently forgetting it to to give Will a pass because oh he's defending his wife and yeah. of course we got the birds on the internet. If my man don't defend me like that, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe make. I don't know what I am. Call me whatever you want to call me, but I don't know. I don't know how I would feel if that happened to me. If somebody made a joke or did something and you got up and like in front of the whole room just got up and smacked the person to me over something that wasn't that bad like gi jane it's a movie he didn't say anything directly about her being a bald head scallywag he didn't bring up nothing about august alcina like he like laverne cox on the red carpet referred directly to their entanglement in their face and nobody got smacked there. You said who? Laverne Cox. Okay. On a red carpet, not for the Oscars, but I think the previous award, whatever it SAG, like was interviewing them on the red carpet. And, I, and I, don't, made a, I, I don't think it's that's equal by good. And made a comment about entanglements, which is more directly. I don't agree that's the same. It's not. It's actually a little ruder. I don't agree. It's ruder. I don't because entanglement is the term that they came up with when they were on the red table talk talking about the situation. G.I. Jane has nothing to is not a direct tie to anything Will or Jada have ever done. I That's hear, why I say it's not the same. I say it's not the same because once again, Will and Jada, it, maybe not to everybody else, but to to um to them were past that a while ago, right? The um, reason why Will Smith felt like it was important, I'm not saying I agree, mm-hmm. why I did it, because they're going through that right now. Which, which, uh, that's no, I, that's not true. The alopecia thing is not that recent. Like, that's been, that's been information for at least a year. No, no, but she's going through it now. That's why I said. Okay. That's but what the I'm fa- But the fact, I hear you. Yeah. But the fact, but I still felt it was disrespectful when Laverne Cox brought up entanglement at the red carpet to talk about it. I hear what you're saying. I thought it was rude. I got it. And I thought she should have been checked in that moment. So to me, it. it's like I hear what you're saying. You can be offended we, by we, that. We, we we feel that way. Yeah. They might not feel that way because they, they, they were past it. Right. Because well, like, I don't know. Not the way he slapped Chris. He might not have been past it. No, no. I'm talking about but anyway. The, past anyway. the entanglement part. I'm saying. I feel like. Um. <laughs> What I'm saying is, if it seems like they were, they're, they're past, they, they, they know, like, they expected a lot more right. when it comes down to that of people saying things. Right. Because they were past it by the, by the time it was addressed. Because, but here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's where I have a problem with that. What? Because the joke that Regina made was directly connected to the whole entanglement storyline. You, you keep saying that, but I, I understand what you're saying. I'm saying... That whole when people joke about that, it doesn't hurt that them that as much. That's but it, what I'm but saying. But the point of the matter is, it's a joke. Both things were jokes. Neither thing was meant in malice. Yes, but one one stings different than the other to them. That's fair. It stings different. <laughs> that, but that, 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 that's the only but, point. But 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 it's still to me. Like yeah, they're, bo- they're both jokes. I yeah. get it, but one one joke is going to sting different to somebody than other. It, that's true. That's true. I just, I just, I just. I'm like, not saying it, it justifies doing that. I'm just yeah. saying that and, and to me, they, they, to me, they, and, and the entanglement jokes. I feel as if I don't think th- th- when they go places, they kind of like I said because they're past. They, they, mm. And the, e- even if like. Is later, it's not as present, right? Mm-hmm. Um, even and their knowledge of it in their mind, they're like, All right, even, even when they were talking about it, they were like, This happened when we weren't really together, we weren't really right? Like, so, like, their their knowledge of it and their thought about it, right, is different, right? It doesn't sting as much, right? Because it's, and they, they might have already had the question, like, everything, right? This right here. When it talks about her and Alicia, stings differently for them. 
Right. I, I mean, because, because even with the joke with uh, him, they both laughed. Right. This one, they did not. Right. So, like, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. They yeah. both joke, but, like, it's this one stings differently. I guess so. I, for me, the, the jokes about my marriage would sting more than jokes about my hair, but that's just me. I don't know them people yeah, like, I don't know this, their business. This stings more to them. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Um, um, what else? What else? What else? I had another thought. Um, they didn't they mention that Bradley Cooper was up there too. Yeah, apparently Bradley Cooper, was, Tyler Perry. Yeah, I, I know. Denzel. I know Tyler Perry and Denzel, but mm. this, like another article said Bradley Cooper. I was like, went up and talked to him too. I was like, oh, they didn't, they didn't, talk, they didn't say Bradley Cooper initially because he white. They not bringing him up in the black men went to go. <laughs> <laughs> went to go counsel him conversation. Come on now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I, like I said at the beginning, I feel like it's sad that the moment is being overshadowed by that. Um, I did see a theory online that I thought was interesting. And they were like, what if it was fake and it was an opportunity for the Oscars to get views and streams for us to be talking about it. Cause like basically all the major newspapers have it as a headline um, talking about it. It's probably the most talked about Oscars that has been in existence in the last decade at least. So if it was a scheme set up by Todd to come to us with the BS, then you know, the Oscars people succeeded um, cause everyone's talking about it. Um, I will say um, when Diddy got up to present somebody he mentioned, yo, we're going to handle this at the after party. We're going to talk it out, blah, 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 blah. And so Diddy has now come out and said the issue is squashed. Because- Apparently they did. It says they, they both handle it at the after party. So yeah. they, they, they might have had a conversation after. Because um, reports came out last night that the LAPD was doing some kind of investigation and, and that Chris save- Rock did, um, declined to press charges. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I, I don't think he would. I don't think he would either. I'm like, he would come, like I, 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 know I he was had a saying, right like, to. I would sue Will Smith, but what would be the point? Yeah. What would be the point? I, I, I know he had a right to, but I, I, I really didn't think he was going to go through that. Yeah. Neither one of them wants the publicity, the anything of, yeah, of a lawsuit. I, I don't think he was going to do that at all. I'm sure that once Will Smith takes a moment and steps back, he's probably going to be embarrassed that he allowed his emotions to get the best of him and tarnish what should have been a a a stellar moment in his life and his in his career as an actor. Um I do think that and this is in no way giving an excuse because I absolutely think he was out of line for putting his hands on that man in in one way or another. I do also think just watching his acceptance speech when he did win he needs to be deeply in somebody's therapy because he has mental health issues. Like something's not right up there. Something is wrong. To do what he did, knowing what he knows, and just thinking about everything that he's kind of been dealing with and going through the last couple of years, if you've like read his book or watched his videos or did any of that, something ain't right up there. And yeah. you can see it in his eyes. Something ain't right up there. Yeah. Like so he, if he, he go into therapy and he stop, he need to go back because that, think, that, that he, right there is I don't think he indicative of, of something. Cause I don't, think, I don't think he stopped. Though. I'm sorry. As a 50 something, Will is what? 53 as a 53 year old man, you should be able to hold your composure better than that. Like not, I get not, it. Not, not if he hasn't dealt with his emotions for fifty years. Great, which is why I'm saying he needs to go to therapy. No, I think he and is. learn. It's just he's just, he needs just, to work. Keep, just, work. keep working at it. Yeah, he, I think he is. It's just it's just not done yet. It's yeah, just, keep working at it because it's like <laughs> I, don't just, think, I don't think it's fixed yet. Like I think that's the other piece of what was troubling about it for me is that Will is a big man. He's not no, you know, twenty five year old Kodak Black like impulsive young like Will is a big man. Will's kids are in their 20s. Like, Will and my dad aren't that far apart in age. To be to be doing that at that big age, like, I would be disappointed in my dad. Like, bro, what you doing? Like, I feel you, you was defending your wife, but, like, what are you doing? Yeah. You Like, you're, you're a grown man. Like, what what is this? So, like, I just was like, something something's not right with him. Yeah, and, Like, to, and, be, and to that- do what he's done all these years and for it to, like, this is what we looking at now. Like I've been feeling like Will ain't been right since he started making them videos. And after he wrote that book and he was sharing all that information he was sharing, I was like, yo, this, this dude not okay up here. Yeah. And I think but, this display at, um, at the Oscars is further indicative of something not being right all the way up there. 
actually, I I think this whole the whole thing with the book and everything started after the King Richard Rowe, because that's why he gained weight in the first place. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So like it it, it kind of started because he gained weight for that role, mm-hmm. and I think that's where he was like, all right, I gotta lose weight and everything. And I I think that kind of started the process, and and that's why I said like, I think he was um. I think sometimes actors go really deep in that role, mm-hmm. and like all right, I because I I think he he was trying really hard to like channel who Richard Williams Richard was, Will, Williams was. Mm-hmm. and like I think when you channel someone that strongly, mm-hmm. you tend to f- your own interpretation of that person it tends to seep into your daily life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um and like and other actors have done it. Denzel has done it. Yeah, like Denzel, like when he was um doing Malcolm X, he did a lot more things in terms of black hip. Like you were saying, like mm-hmm. every time he's done a role, he's kind of enveloped that, like right. embody that character a mm-hmm. lot more in terms of how he does things. Right. So like it's 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 interesting. Like um, actors have done that. Sure. So like I think that um. It's, I, 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 I think, like I said, I, I think most celebrities and who are performers, mm-hmm. it's something <laughs> off. Yeah. But they have, because they have, I feel like they feel like they have to be to fully embody a character. Gotcha. Number one. And number two, to put on airs in front of people and perform for like, 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 a lot of performers do that. Like I said, like they have the laugh and they have the smile that they had. They had. They can turn that on and off. Yes. In front of the camera, like when the camera's on, they turn it on and turn. It on. Like a lot of performers do that, which I've I've heard people, a lot of people who do that and everything. Mm-hmm. I also think that it's temporary insanity. Yeah, but I think but, I think he definitely of, had um, a, 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 a lot, moment. A lot, a lot of performers do that, but I I don't I don't think it's healthy. But a lot of do performers do do that. Turn it on and off the um, I'm in performance mode. Yeah, yeah. How how they do it is, but like it it's how you survive, I guess. Right in the celebrity world, but I do think that I, that's why all celebrities should be in therapy. Yeah, because I, like that, that that that's a that's a that's a toll on somebody. No, absolutely. I the celebrity life is definitely not made for all, everybody. It's not for the faint of heart. It really all, does. All celebrities should be in therapy. Yeah, like it it takes a lot to do what they do to constantly be under scrutiny to have people criticize everything they do to talk about everything that cannot be an easy time. And I'm not that's in like, any way trying to act like it is. That, that's why you you have you have to understand people like Simone Biles and yeah Naomi Osaka with like. Just be like, look, y'all. I don't want Ari Lennox. Like, yeah. nah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Doja, which, which, Doja Cat just said she's done doing music after yeah, she like finishes it's, the it's, store. It's, it's it's a it's a because like, it's it's a lot. Yeah, because like I, it's like people just want to do their art. And right. That's it. They they don't want the celebrity and like I feel as if like people get upset because like they don't want it. Like I remember yeah. you get mad at him in soccer. It was like, nah, you have to be able to take it. It was like the only thing you gotta know what to do is it's play, play tennis. tennis. That's play that's tennis. all she has to know how to do. <laughs> like I love like she, I she, she doesn't have to do any of those things. Like I love the way like I talk about this all the time, but I love the way J Cole, for example, approaches music. J Cole comes. He gives us albums and leaves. He doesn't, he's not in the mix. He's not into anything. He don't want to talk to nobody. He don't want to be involved in nothing. J. Cole said, I just make music, but I'm a regular person at the end of the day. I make this music. I do these features. I do a tour. I go home to my wife and kids. I'm not, J. Cole don't be at no industry yeah, functions. You, you, you don't, you, like, I, I love the way he approaches it because he's like, I'm not going to let y'all drive me crazy. Like talking about me and Whatever, whatever, I'm not addressing nothing. If y'all want to write in the blogs and say I do this and do that, okay, I do this and do that. Cool story. Like, I love the way he approaches it. Not everybody has the luxury to do what J. Cole does, but I appreciate the fact that there is like someone out there as an example to show this is how you can kind of have both yeah. in the sense of I'm doing my art and I'm making money from it, but I'm also not deeply immersed in the toxicity of media coverage or 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 conversation about me. Like J. Cole don't do no interviews. Yeah. J. Cole put out music and be like, listen, I'm gonna give y'all a tour. I'm gonna do some features with some of the kids and then I'm gonna go back home and I'll see you in three years. Yeah. 
And that's it. And whatever people say about him in the blogs between now and three years, he don't care. He don't respond. He not doing no interview. He not doing nothing. He's just like, okay, now I'm done being J. Cole, the rapper. I'm going to go home and be dad. I'm going to be Jermaine, the husband. And that's that's the story. And like, I, I love that for him. But not a lot of people are able to do that because unfortunately, you know, J. Cole came out at a time where it was okay for you to have some mystery as a public figure. Now that's not the case. It's like you need to come into the public fear, public figure sphere being open and willing to have people access every thing in every part of your life. And so that that can be taxing, I'm sure, after a while, have constantly feeling like people have that access and that this and that, that. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, I ultimately feel like, you know, it was disappointing what happened. I wish that it could have been handled better. And even if it was a stunt, like if that's really what it was, like it was a stunt for ratings, like both Chris and and Will are better than that, and I, I, I doubt it. And I, should I, I, not I and should not have been involved in something like that if that's what it was. I, I don't think it was. Um, last thing to say is like I I remember um, Dave Chappelle mm-hmm. when he was talking about the Martin situation mm-hmm. when he was when he ran out with the gun and all that stuff under when Martin was there. Oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. And he was like, "There's something wrong with this celebrity thing. Mm-hmm. Like someone." to make someone like Martin have this mental, mental breakdown, mental breakdown mm-hmm. and do that like there's something that tell about like like he's he's not he's not a weak person right he's like Martin's not a weak person like but something about this mm-hmm. thing with that and I, I think this kind of plays into that like some something there's something about being a celebrity uh-huh. <laughs> that does something yeah like Will Smith shouldn't like <laughs> like that, that, that like some, some there's something that about being a celebrity that kind of does it like it's, yeah. it's not it makes me really not want to be because like something about it mm-hmm. that makes that breaks people down i think i think and and, uh, and like and i think it, it it's doing more for wilson because he's, he's been a such a model yeah a model celebrity for so long yeah that the break is going to be stronger yeah because it's he's been he's been that way he's been like I'm going to be picture perfect for so long, mm-hmm. for such a long time. Yeah, that like this difference is <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's it's going to it's going to um it's going to be a big break. So like I, I'm glad he's going to therapy, but I do know it's going to be a process to break down all his his years <laughs> of being yeah. a celebrity. Yeah. 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 I, 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 so I, I, I think there's, there's, there's something wrong with Hollywood. <laughs> there, there is. No facts. That's a big fact. And, That's a big fact. And I, I think this is just a, a glance. Yeah. And there's, into there's that. something, there's something wrong with Hollywood, and there's something wrong with what happened last night. Now the Academy put out a statement saying they don't condone violence in any form, and I'm like, that's cool. Um, also, Academy, y'all should have never let Will come back and sit in that auditorium if that was the case. If you really didn't condone violence, he should have been kicked out. Uh, I don't care if he was the biggest Oscar winner. He should have been kicked out if you don't condone violence. Also, y'all are out here celebrating known rapists and giving them awards. So I don't really know how I feel about that. But um, go off, y'all. Um, so, yeah, that was our main topic for today. Child Will Smith got slap happy out there. That's crazy. I can't even believe he did that. Um, <laughs> anyways, and then was at the after party jamming to his music. Like, he ain't just slap fire out of Chris Rock. But, you know, whatever. Um, new music. New music. So, this week, uh, Lotto released her album, 777. Um, I listened to it from start to finish. It's a bop. I like it. I love that for him. Um, For her. Sorry. Um, Coffee. Blessings for Pomeritan. She released the album called Gifted. And then Fife Dog, posthumously, uh, released Forever. I haven't listened to that yet, but that's on my agenda to listen to for my ride to work this week. That's the new music out in terms of albums. Um, in terms of singles, um, I saw um, her and Mary J got Good Morning Gorgeous Remix. Um, Chance the Rapper put a song out um, called Child of God. Um, Nicki Minaj has a song out with Fabio Foreign called We Go Up. I appreciate how Fabio Foreign is uh 
is moving and shaking in these streets. Um, I love that for him. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. It was a quiet weekend music. Uh, um, let's move on now to this week in random. This week in random. So in music news. Uh, FYI, Will Smith, I guess 14 hours ago. Uh-huh. Um, I guess posted under one of the pictures saying you can't invite people from Philly or Baltimore nowhere. Go ahead. Obviously. Uh, cause y'all ignorant. Um, so Cardi B's Invasion of Privacy album, um, was the first, is the first album where every song on the album has gone platinum or higher. Um, that's kind of a big deal. So woot woot to Cardi B, shout outs, can't wait for the next album. Cause Invasion of Privacy is bops. I don't care what you girls said. Mm -hmm. I said it on this podcast when it first came out and I'll say it again. No skips. On invasion of privacy. That's good. Um, Bow Wow says that he should have signed to Snoop instead of JD when he was a Ute. Um, basically, in a bunch of, I think, tweets, he basically said that um, him and JD didn't really have a synergistic working relationship. And he felt like Snoop would have been better for maybe him doing the kind of music he wanted to do. And I felt like that was crazy because it's giving ungrateful. Um, It's giving, you were just on a podcast with JD like two, three weeks ago. Like why, why would you say something like this? Like what's, what's up with you? Like you're, you're 35 at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I appreciate if you had, the regret, but also I need you to not say that out loud. JD's still alive. Snoop is like, just stop. Like, I don't, I don't really get the point of saying it. Like no one asked you this. You just came out of nowhere and told us that you felt that way. And I, I, I I didn't like it personally. I didn't like it. Did you see it? No. Yeah. Uh, I I didn't like it. I heard about it though. Yeah. I didn't like it. I was like, uh, I wasn't around for a long time now. I, somebody needs to get get Bow Wow because he's he's been he's been behaving ridiculously, um, you know, in the last I don't know ten years, and I just I don't really know whatever happened with him. He said he basically wasn't um, impressed with his albums uh, that he put out. Um, that they don't have any work chemistry. Um, you know, he said they're cool, but like, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know why he had to say this, but I guess God bless. Um, so I'm um, going back to Lotto that I talked about a few minutes ago. So basically, um, I don't know if you saw this, but in her promo for her album, she was talking about how, you know, the album was, like possibly risking being delayed from being released when it was supposed to because there was a male artist that had a feature on the album that didn't want to clear his feature because she didn't uh, want to give him the pooms. And apparently it was Kodak Black, which doesn't surprise me, that little gremlin. Um... It got released. And like I said, I listened to the album and I'm like, honestly, I would have told the label take Kodak off because he wasn't needed on the song, in my opinion. Like the song he was on, I was like, I would have been fine if it was just her. I, I didn't need him personally. But I was like, first of all, ew. Like, <laughs> like ew. Like, dude, you're, first of all, Lotto, I believe Lotto has a man. One. Two, why does this woman have to give you the pooms for you to release the 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 rights or whatever to the song so she can release her album like didn't you get paid for doing this you got paid money right so why were you trying to hold up what this woman was trying to do because she wasn't give you wasn't giving you the time of day what i will say is physically people, people have done that for years i know and it's trash it's trash and yeah, people the, have definitely done that for years the thing that got me was when she was talking about it people was like oh i don't understand why she's talking about it she should just handle it privately the label she should just take him off and it's like 
do people understand how labels work? She can't take him off. The label wanted him on the song. And she said that the label wanted him on the song. So she didn't have the ability to take him off. They're the ones fighting to keep him on the song. So what's she supposed to do? What, what, what can she do? Mm-hmm. All she can do is hope that he will come to his senses and not hold up her album release. But there's nothing she could do. And, you know, just the fact that people were like annoyed with her talking about it. I was like, but why? This happens to so many people. She's just one of the few that's willing to step up and say that it's happening. But to your point, this happens all the time. So I just thought that was disgusting. And it made me dislike Kodak Black even more than I already do. Because I don't like him just because of how he looked. Like something about him just makes me go, ugh. There's a lot of people that are like that. But yeah, he's he's one of the people whenever I see them, I just be like, ugh, here he go. So speaking of more music, so a lot of artists are bo- boycotting the Grammys again this year. Because um, I think they said Kanye can't come. Um, given his recent uh, behaviors, which we've talked about here. Um, and then... A little, what do you say? Hmm? a little abusive. Uh, just you know, a little, a lot, depending on who you ask. Um, the weekend is um, boycotting it. I boycotted the weekend in general because that young man scares me. But um, the weekend said he's also boycotting um, because he doesn't feel like the awards are, you know, accurately, accurately uh, judging or reflecting like the variety of music that you know artists like himself put put out. Um, Drake don't go to the Grammys. He stopped messing with them um, a while ago. Um, Quavo and some other artists have said that they are boycotting the Grammys as well. And then some of them are saying stupid things, which makes me be like, I don't think rappers should be, some of them should be educating our community in any capacity. We need our own awards. My guy, we, we have our own awards. There's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of them. There's we, BET, we, there's hip-hop we have awards. the BET Awards. Hip-hop we have awards. the BET Hip Hop Awards. We've got the there's, NAACP Image Awards. Yeah, the Soul Train We've Award. got Soul Train. There are several black award shows. Yeah. Y'all ninjas don't be coming to them. Y'all don't think y'all are. Y'all don't think those shows are worthy of your presence or your attention. Y'all clamoring for the Grammy, but then mad when the Grammy people won't acknowledge y'all. And now y'all want to start talking about making our own awards. They've been there. They've been there. The BET Awards been around at least 20 years. The Hip Hop Awards been around, I'm say, Boing Ring on 10. NAACP Awards been around for 50 or 60. The Soul Train been around for about the same amount of time. So I'm just like, what do we mean we need our own award shows? They already exist. Y'all just need to pay attention to them and patronize them. But they exist. <sighs> And the fact that y'all say we need our own award shows out loud in front of people like we don't have them is problematic for me. I don't like it. Um, moving on from that. So Atlanta, Donald Glover's genius show, um, came back out for season three this past week. Can we talk about how Donald Glover been meeting out this show to us for 10 years? Like, well, not 10, maybe, maybe seven. Because the first season came out in 2016. The second season came out in 2018 and then he made his way a smooth four years to put out season three. And it was a mm-hmm. double header of a season opener. I don't want to spoil it for people, but say your prayers and gird your loins before you watch it. Because the mental, the mental, like you just going to leave that, that them two episodes, like uh, what, what, uh, it's going to be a lot to unpack. So just, I didn't know that when I went in. I was expecting something different and it just, it, it gave a lot, but I'm loving it so far. I'm definitely going to be tuned into the rest of the season. Um, in other, in other news, um, did you hear about, um, Hillsong and how it seems like the Hillsong, the Hillsong church is folding in, um, the United States at this point? No. What happened? So Hillsong initially started in Australia and then the founder brought it here to the United States and they've got like different Hillsong campuses across the country. Um, So here in New York City, um, Pastor Carl Lentz, um, who's Justin Bieber's pastor or was Justin Bieber's pastor allegedly, stepped down from his role recently because he was having an affair with, I believe, a congregant of the church while married and, you know, it was interesting because he always because he always talked about 
apparently when he would do his, you know, preaching and teaching at the church would always talk to people about being wary of premarital sex and only saving sexual activity for marriage. So it's like you were preaching that, but you're out here busting down a congregant. That's crazy, Mr. Sir. That's nuts. Then the guy who brought Hillsong here from Australia is apparently, um, in court or about to go to jail. I forget which one because I read the story last week and I don't remember off the top of my head. But he apparently is charged with helping his father cover up sexual abuse of children in the church because his dad apparently was the person who was running the church at one point and was sexually abusing children and he helped his dad cover it up. Um, So with all of that going on, Sometime last year, they brought in this black pastor to, I think, their Georgia location. And the black pastor was, he just um, reached, uh, made a statement this week, like, yeah, I'll be parting ways with Hillsong to start my own church. And I just thought it was interesting because it was like, when they brought the black guy on, I was like, because Hillsong is not known for black people. For the blacks. For the blacks. So I was like, this is very interesting that they're bringing on this what, this black guy. But now that I see all these allegations and people stepping down and this and this and this, I'm like, ah, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. So now they are, you know, they were trying to do their little PR thing. And the black guy said, I, I, I would like to be excluded from this narrative expeditiously. And so he's leaving to start his own church and, uh, that's where that goes. But it's, it's just always interesting to me, you know, and I, a lot of the uh, responses from the black Christian community on in, on the socials was very interesting this week because they were like, the way some of these black evangelicals like be in these Hillsong type churches and try to model their worship experiences after them, ah, ah, ah. It's like, look what you're modeling. Look what you're modeling after. Look what you're trying to tell people is the vibe, the wave, the whatever, when you're willingly sitting up under people who you know are like moving wrong and in, 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 in abusing their people. Like, then this is not to say that there's not abuse in predominantly black denominations of churches in general, but it's just like, there's a wave, I guess, of, of people who feel like the hill songs and churches of that ilk are the way, the truth, and the life. And it's like, no, yes, there are problems with the black church, you know, Kojic, Pentecostal, whatever, apostolic denominations, but running over there, the grass ain't greener over there. That's that's the long story short of the situation. Now, now you look crazy for being affiliated with some nonsense like that. But yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on. Um, anything for you? Anything else? Oh, no. I think that's, that's it. That's it. That is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. So, um, I will leave you all this week, um, with an affirmation, uh, I think this is very apropos for the um, topic that we talked about today. Um, And it is, I am superior to negative thoughts and low actions. Do with that what you will. So I think that's it. We're going to head on out of here, y'all. So until next time, we we bid bid you. you Adieu. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey. It's the All Love No Fear Podcast. Hey. Check us out. It's the All Love Oh No Fear.